I'm Marion Briggs and I coordinated the installation of the woodchip boiler system here. The Hockey Hills a housing community. It was set up in 1972 and has really changed and developed over these years. This is a, a woodchip boiler system, which is a, a neighbourhood system. It, it's uh, heating and hot water for 31 units, which is not just the, the houses, but five um, buildings including community buildings and workshops. I'm Jamie Kirkman, I'm the Forestry and Sawmill Manager for Borkham Estate. Stuart Boyle came into my yard um, to ask me if we sold wood chip at all. Uh, at the time we sold wood chip for mulch, so I showed him a sample of the chip we had and he said, that looks like it'll do the job. My name's Brian Still, I'm the plumber for Douch Partnerships. We're general builders, but we are starting to go more and more into eco-friendly and sustainable buildings. Stuart Boyle came because he and his partner were interested in joining the community. And we had a conversation about installing a, a, some kind of heating system and getting off. I wanted really to get rid of the LPG system that we were on. And it turned out that he was an agent for the Binder wood chip system. We did a feasibility study, first of all. We looked at different possibilities and given the the structure of the place and the fact that at that time we had we had to cater for, for 90 year olds as well as families with young children and when we discovered that this was really low maintenance and it fed itself um, then it was very encouraging. To begin with we, we went through a process within the community of looking at the feasibility study and deciding whether we would continue with in the boiler. We proceeded in a way where we could go step by step and at each step um, if we felt we didn't want to go further then we could stop. When, when we first were thinking about installing the boiler we were advised to have a backup system, central system with uh, oil or gas and we decided against that because we anyway have a situation where all the houses have wood burning stoves or open fireplaces and it's always been the policy that each house could be independent if there was a power cut. We had a delay with the planning permission because the immediate neighbours were concerned about the emissions coming from the exhaust of the boiler house. We had to get a report from the Environment Agency. We had used this report to try to allay the fears of the neighbours. So another thing we had to take into account that the, we're living in an area of outstanding natural beauty so we had to be very careful with the design. We also had to check, uh, because this is a, a smokeless zone, whether the smoke coming from the boiler was uh, within the limits which was allowed. We uh, went to a firm of consultants to help with the design of the project and they put forward proposals where the boiler house would be sited and where the pipes would go and so on, what kind of boiler and that was really invaluable. It was very important that we had this advice to begin with. From the time we did the feasibility study it took about two years to, to do all the planning and the design for the system and for the boiler house. We got a 50,000 grant from EDF Energy Green Fund, uh, which included 20,000 for an educational aspect where we were willing to show the boiler house to people and um, open up to giving workshops and so on. There was the South East England Development Agency because we anticipated that uh, through the process we would be able to create some jobs, particularly with the wood chip supply. The Forestry Commission helped us to get a grant from the High Weald AONB because they knew that there would be better woodland management through the use of wood chip. Then the suppliers, Wood Energy Limited, gave us a grant from the Bioenergy Lottery Fund and we had a small amount from um, an organisation in London. Then the householders financed the rest and we allocated according to the housing size and so on how much share each person would pay. And some people couldn't pay it immediately, so we allowed them to pay it up over a period of time, which left us a shortfall. And the company managing the project then lent 
and a month from Triodos Bank to fill in the gap. I started phoning people and they said, uh, yes, we can help, but also have you tried this person? So I rang that person and that person said yes, but maybe you should also try this person. So it was like following a trail. And uh, in the end, we managed to get money from everybody that we applied to. So we set up a, a share company, which is called Hothi Hill Renewable Energy Limited, which would manage and install any technology that we decided to do. The advantage of the share company is that the people from Hothi Hill who are putting money into the project would have an investment in the form of shares. And we could also have money from outside the community, from people who wanted to invest with us. We had to find a place for the boiler house and we have 22 acres here and, but it was very difficult to find a place that had all the right conditions. There were three stages and the first one is, was to start building the boiler house and then the boiler had to be delivered before we completed that uh, because it had to be dropped in from a, by a crane and then the, the rest of the boiler house built around it. The woodchip comes from Balcom Estate, which is about six miles away. Uh, we wanted to find the nearest place. Okay, so here we've got a, a nice piece of timber from uh, Sweet Chestnut Coppice. Uh, as you can see, it's lovely and bent, and it has some great knots in it. And as a result, it would be pretty much useless for any other market than wood fuel. Uh, in the past, it may have got used for logs, um, but now, certainly, we've got a market for that. Other timber that we get is from first and second thinnings. Thinnings are very important for forestry. It's uh, like weeding on a grand scale. We always plant too many trees just to make sure that we get a full coverage of crop. And from there, we have to thin out some trees to allow the trees to grow bigger. If we didn't, then we just have lots of tall, thin trees. It's one of the times when felling trees isn't a bad thing. But the wood chip is in the silo. Inside the silo, there is a metal arm which agitates the wood chip so that it doesn't all compact. From that it is fed by Archimedes screw, like a big corkscrew, through into the boiler room. At the end of that it drops down to another Archimedes screw which um, feeds a measured, measured amount of wood chip into the boiler. As the boiler calls for heat, the whole process follows, follows that through. And the boiler heats water which fills two tanks as a kind of buffer the water then is circulated through highly in insulated pipes to all the, the houses. Each house has a, an interface unit where the water from the system meets the water from the central heating system. And the interface unit has a meter so we can measure how much heat each house uses. And the billing is done according to the kilowatt hours. For the Hofer Hill project, we actually charge for our wood fuel by charging per kilowatt hour of heat generated from our wood fuel. This works well for us because it means if the moisture content of the wood fuel is lower, it generates higher calorific value, more kilowatt hours, and obviously we get paid for our hard work drying it. About once a month, the heat exchanger needs to be looked at and a, and a quick dust out, and the igniters always need to be checked and once a year just needs a major service to make sure all the components are greased up and the fan is working and all the electronic components are working. There's very little waste from the boiler because the, the gases which are emitted are recycled within the chamber. It produces ash and we take the ash and put it into the compost and use it in the garden. It's certainly employed one full-time equivalent person to, to maintain the supply. But what it also has done is made sure that we have a market for our first and second thinnings, which guarantees and secures jobs for two of the other guys that work in the woods. It's, it's also allowed us to invest in slightly improved machinery. Um, and as a result, that means we can also work on some of the other more diverse projects around our woodlands, so improving our own biodiversity. We've been saying for the last 15 years in the forest industry that um, this market was there, um, we're just waiting for somebody to take advantage of it, really. If there's any other 
group of people who, who want to establish a neighbourhood heating system. And I think the main thing is that there's a, a common intention among the people who would be involved and that they see the value of changing to, to a renewable source. There are two things that make this worthwhile for me. And the first is that we don't have the LPG system anymore. And also just to wake up in the morning and feel the heat and know that the source of the heat is, is wood chip.